Hey, welcome back everybody. In the previous tutorial, we covered how to set up a detailed post page in addition to showing comments and replies underneath it. In this tutorial, we will cover um, the ability to like and unlike comments in addition to reply to them. So let's get started. So what I want to cover here firstly is the ability to like and unlike comments. And then we'll move, to, move down to ability to like and unlike replies. So if you remember the schema in the um, each of the collection of comments and replies, we have the like user reference. So this will help us determine the ability to show whether we need to like or unlike um, the comment slash reply. So let's do this. So what I want to do here is firstly, the word here like and unlike should be dynamic. If the user has already liked the comment, we will show the word unlike, giving them the ability to unlike. And next, we will, um, if the user has not liked the post, we'll give them the ability to like the post by showing the word like. So let's do this. So the first thing I want to do here is conditional value. So remember, if, um, the comments document contains the user already. So what I'm thinking here is that the, there should be condition. The condition is whether the comments document like user reference list contains, does the list contain the authenticated user reference? Okay. So this is what it should be. And then I like to do the, I like to do the inverse. So here, so it means does not contain. So this means that the comments document like user reference does not contain the authenticated user reference. So now we show like giving i.e. the ability to like, and then else it will show unlike. And then this is the UI I'm going for. I'll just, maybe the default UI builder display, I'll just do this. It doesn't really make a difference here yeah, because the actual text gets shown is these, this um, conditional value here. Cool. Um, I might actually uh, now do the same for the replies. So similar type of logic. So firstly, it's conditional value. If the replies document like user ref, this contains item, authenticated user ref, opposite statement, I go like, else I should unlike. And display values like slash unlike. Cool, now that's it. Um, next, I want to add the action flow. So when a user like action or unlike. So what we want to do here is firstly, um, open this um, action flow editor so we can see a bit more clearly. So the first thing we're going to do is add a conditional action, similar to how we've done it for the text itself. So the condition will be very similar. If the user has already liked the post, we will unlike it. If the user has not liked it, we will like it. So the condition we'll check for is if um, this action flow, which relates to the comments, so it's the comments document, if the liked user reference, this contains item of authenticated user ref. So this means that if the comments already contains authenticated user ref, meaning they have liked it, we will now unlike it. So we will go update document. And the document we'll update is the comments document uh, or comments reference. And then what we want to do is the liked user ref. We want to remove from set. We want to remove the authenticated user ref. And then similarly, we'll copy this action and do the opposite. Here, we want to add the authenticated user ref into it, i.e. So here, to recap again, is does this comment like list contain the current user? If it does, let's remove it. If it doesn't, let's add it. So that's how you do it. And similarly, I will do exactly the same for the replies. So let's put in a conditional action as well for on for on tap. So the condition is basically does the replies um, like user ref 
this contains item of authenticator user user ref. And if it does, let's update the replies document and then add the field of the field like user ref. I want to remove, remove it because the user has liked it currently. Now they're unliking it. And now let's do the same for to the inverse for actually liking it um, because the user has not liked it. It's a lot of tongue twisters here and logical thinking. Yeah, I think if you think about it slowly, it's, it'll be pretty clear to you. Um, so that's how it works. Um, maybe the next thing I want to do here is maybe show the number of likes next to like and unlike um, because it gives you ability to see how many likes this comment slash reply has. Um, so maybe I just add another text field here. I'll drag it up here. Um, so think of this as a number of likes. So what I want to do here is maybe just uh, something very basic. Let's make it put in brackets so it's a bit clearer. Um, so here I want to do this. Okay. So what I want to do here now is show the number of likes. So this would be the comments document, like user ref, number of items. This will show the number of items. And then this word here, it will be like or likes with a plural if the number is greater than one. So what I want to do here is have a conditional value saying if the number of likes for this post, uh, number of items is greater than one, it will be called likes. Else it will be like. So it'll be one like or two, two or more likes. And then I'll just change the display value so you can see here. So this is what it would look like. Um, actually, it'll be like brackets here. It would look like this. Um, but what I want to do also is that I won't show this if there are no likes at all. So I'll only show this number of likes if the condition is if the comments like user breath number of items is greater than zero. Now, if there are no likes, it will show nothing. If there are likes, it will show something. So you can see here visually what it looks like. Um, maybe I just change the spacing to zero here and add it manually ourselves to eight to eight. Okay, maybe four, four. And I'll add some spacing here on four. Um, so this looks quite good. This is just the UI stuff that you might be working on to make, which, which, which is a bit fiddly. Um, okay, cool. Now let's do the same for replies. So I'm just gonna copy this widget, go down to replies and find what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna delete this quickly, I'll add four on each side, and then paste this number of likes into the reply side and rewire it. So here, the number of items um, the number of likes relates to replies. So we we'll have go to reconfigure the re re reconfigure to the replies document, like user ref, number of items, confirm, confirm. Um, yep, that looks good, greater than zero. Okay, just double checking. And then the number of likes gets shown is the number of replies, like user ref, number of items, no further changes. And then if the replies number of likes user is greater than one, we'll show likes, else we will show um, like, L-I-K-E. Cool, cool, perfect. Um, so let's check out five, five stop rules to make sure it's deployed. Yes, okay, I'm gonna save this project quickly. And now let's refresh this app. Oh yes, one thing I forgot to do here is actually navigate to the details post page. So we got to navigate to details post page from the feed homepage. So this is simply going to be 
Um, now we'll get your detail post and we'll pass in the parameter of the post ref. So this will bring us to this page. I'll refresh the project again. Okay, now that the app has loaded, let's navigate to each page. So you can see here, uh, there's a major problem I forgot to build out and it's ability to create the first comment where you can create the first comment and then subsequently the replies will feed through. So let's quickly configure this um, major thing that I totally missed out on. So let's quickly add this ability to add a comment first. So what we're gonna do here is add a container and we'll drag this under the main post container. I will add a row. Next, I will add a text field allowing the user to submit the comment. So I'm gonna add some padding here for the container. And then I will unconstrain the max width and then max line, I won't have max line. Maybe uh, that's what it looks like. And then the label text, I'll say submit a, submit a comment. And then I will turn off the hint as well. So it'll be like this. Next, I wanna add an icon to submit the comment. Um, maybe a send button, this looks pretty popular. Uh, so this is what I'm going for. And then what I want to do here is, um, maybe I'll wrap this in a form builder. So I'll add a, in this container, I'll do a form validation. Um, let me just fix this quickly. Yep, yep, this looks good. And I'll validate text field. Cool. Now, what the form validation does is basically, I want to check whether someone has actually typed something here. Like for example, they have actually typed hello world um, before allowing them to press the submit button. So what this button I want to do here is, firstly on tap, I want to validate the form. So not set form field. I want to on tap at uh, form and then where is it? Validate form. And then the form to validate is form number one and then terminate if it fails. Um, so you can add a warning about what it says. Okay, this field is, please enter your comment. Cool. Now, when they press this action button here, on tap, I will validate the form first. And then once it's validated, I will add an action of creating a document of comments. So you go to comments collection, the credit time is current date time. And then next, the comment text would be from the text widget itself. So we submit a comment and then the post reference will be parameters post ref. And the user reference will be the user who actually submitted this comment. So the authenticator user ref. Next, it will be the, uh, we don't need liked. What else, what other fields will we have? Yep, so that's it. Um, and then I want to clear the text field after it's submitted. And then let's save this to see what it looks like. Um, so I'm just going to refresh the app and hopefully this will um, allow us the ability to submit a comment, a brand new comment on a post. So let's go to this post I have. Hello, this is a very uh, long lorem lore, ipsum text. Okay, thank you, auto correct. Let's submit it. You can see, boom, it has submitted here. And then similarly, I can like and unlike. So if I like it, you can see one like. If I unlike, um, there'll be no likes. So let me just add some spacing to the word here to make sure it look clear, a bit cleaner between the number and the word like slash likes. Cool. Um, so for example here, if I, let's say I like it. If we go to the backend database, so let's navigate to the comments and you can see here, once I like it, we have our user reference here. So I'm just liking my own post here um, and unliking it, which is absolutely fine. So if I log out and go to the other profile credit 
for called John. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see here, but go to the same post, and I like it also. There are two good likes now. So the original creator's likes and the um, John's like, which is our current profile logged in. And then if I go to my own post, I can also submit a comment and so on, right? Um, so this is now John submitting this post or submitting a comment on Stephen's post. And then of course, um, and you can just play around with it. I'm gonna take a pause here because we've covered a lot of ground actually, more than I expected on likes and unlikes. In the next tutorial, we will cover the ability to reply to comments and replies. So remember to comment, like, and subscribe for more content on Flutterflow, or if you want to stay updated on this series. See you in the next video.